Lennon's on. Hello. If you, uh, make sure your mic, uh, uh, mute your microphones ready for the when we start in a couple of minutes. So we've got one minute to go. So, um, so you'll find you can't activate your videos. You should only just be able to see me. And again, uh, there'll be points where you can answer questions. If you open the meeting chat box um, on your uh, desktop, that's the sort of little speech bubble. That looks a bit like this one up here. Then, um, then you can uh, type in questions as we go. And I'll try and get through as many of those as possible. And again, bear in mind this is all being recorded. So again, uh, if you've got any questions, can you make sure they're appropriate. And um, and again, it will give me a chance to answer anything I can't get through in the next uh, half an hour or so, um, and get back to individuals. So we'll start in about one minute's time. Okay, so it's uh, one o'clock. See lots of people just logging on, so let's give it another 30 seconds or so. Okay, we'll make a start and we might have some more people joining us. So a few house rules just before we start, uh, just to stop feedback and make sure you can all hear, um, please make sure your microphones are muted. Um, and if you have a question, please just type it into the comments box. So if you look at the bottom of your screen on Teams, there's like a little sort of speech bubble. If you click on there, you should get a little meeting chat bar up here by the side of your screen. And, uh, and then you can type in a question there. And finally, bear in mind that it is being recorded. So please make sure um, you write appropriate things on this forum. So um, thank you very much for joining us. Um, I'm a, it's a real great shame that we can't have our normal induction day today. Um, uh, it's always one of the highlights of the school calendar. And uh, even in normal times, it would have been a bit of a while since you've been into school uh, with normal exams. So, um, so it's always a really, really great, great few days. Um, we are making some changes for September. Um, uh, we've had confirmation from the government today that schools will be reopening to all year groups in September with maybe a few uh, changes that you'll be finding out about in the next few weeks. Um, but um, you will be starting your courses as normal and it's planned that A-levels uh, and BTECs uh, and access courses will be running as normal next year with normal examinations uh, in two years time. Um, so the first day which you'll be coming back is the 7th of September and the 7th of September is going to be a different day this year. We're just going to have year 7s and year 12s coming in because it's really important that both of them transitioning into secondary school and for you transitioning into sixth form that you get a bit more of extra attention. And that day will, will be uh, consist of you coming in, registering, um, having a bit of an introduction welcome uh, by me and my team. And then you'll have the opportunity that day uh, to a bit like we would have done today and tomorrow to go around and meet each of your teachers. If you've got three or four subjects um, and again, to find out a bit more about the courses before they start proper on the Tuesday. So again, we might still have people wanting to make some changes to their courses. And again, as I've explained to any of you that I've interviewed, um, there's lots of opportunities to make tweaks. We have completed the timetable based on your preferences, but there is scope to make some changes. Um, and on results day every year, we will be there uh, once you've collected your results. And if you want to speak to someone about any changes, we'll, there'll be a whole team of us there. Um, and most of those are usually very easy um, to make um, and straightforward. 
Also in September, once you start your courses, um, we run the timetable as a dummy timetable for at least two weeks. Um, and again, we often have students maybe tweaking their subjects after they've sampled one or two lessons, and that won't really adversely affect your learning in any subject. So don't panic if you're if you're still unsure. unsure. If you have um, made a decision that you do want to change something, um, I've already had a few students contact me. If you do let me know, I can make those changes straight away. Um, just email me. My email, uh, j.linnell at tayfromhigh.org is in the letter that we sent you. So please uh, go back to the email and feel free to send me any questions. And if there's any questions you don't want to discuss in this public forum, then again, you can email me directly or ask your parents to email me directly if they have any questions as well. We normally do a parents information evening on the 24th of September. Again, we're waiting to find out if that will be possible to do mass meetings. If not, it will probably be in some kind of webinar form like this. Uh, but again, that will still be operating on that day as well. So that's a bit of a sort of introduction, really. Um, hopefully, when you've um, got your letters um, yesterday for the induction, you, there's a lot of things you can look at. Um, we've decided to put on our website some additional work. So we're normally set a summer homework for you to be doing to prepare for each of your subjects and unusually year 11s this year having not had to revise for their exams fully uh, and take those exams have had a bit more time so we released those to you quite early back in easter but normally you do get those today um, so because some of you have zipped through that and are really keen to get started on your subjects there is an additional set of tasks and homeworks on the website as well uh, again they're not compulsory but if again would be really advisable to do um, and they might involve you know watching the documentaries or completing small tasks and again they, they're really important that you have a look at those as well and again remember you are only doing usually three or four subjects at a level rather than nine or ten at GCSE so again it might be possible to have a look at that over the next couple of months before September as I say it's the, it's the summer home that we sent you back in Easter that's also on the website that is compulsory will be taken in and marked these are additional tasks if you'd like to do them. Um, but again, we always advise the more wider reading you can do, the better. So, um, so that's available for you. And um, also you would have seen, uh, our, we set up a YouTube ch channel. I normally do quite a detailed assembly and I don't want to talk to you too much today on this webinar apart from answering your questions. So I strongly recommend you look in there. There's a sort of 40 minute long um, uh, in welcome to sick form on there, which you can stop and start or watch on your phones. Uh, if you get, uh, find, get bored of my monotonous voice, you can always stop it and come back to it later. And that explains how the sick form works in great detail. So if you've got specific questions, of course, I can answer them now. But um, but again, that would be something you can always go back to and consult. And also you've got a pack of all our policies at sick form and how they work. Um, sick form is very much a halfway house between go, leave, going to university or going to a big FE college and a, a high school. So we like to think we're sort of in the middle, sort of half and half, um, where you get a lot more freedoms, a lot more flexibilities. But of course, um, bear in mind, we are still based in a school setting. And so we have a few uh, restrictions you might not have in those settings. A uh, classic example might be mobile phones. Uh, as you know, Tavern High School, like most high schools, is a no mobile phone site. Obviously, a co college uh, or university wouldn't have that rule. But we have a sort of halfway house where sick formers are more than welcome to listen to their phones and use their mobile phones in the sick form centre, which is quite a large area of the school now, but not in the main part of the buildings, you know, walking around school, because that's not very fair on younger kids when we try to try and set an example. So again, it's again, it's a halfway house of having extra privileges. Uh, and we've actually, in fact just installed brand new Wi-Fi in the sick form in the last couple of weeks to make that much quicker, uh, as that was something the students fed back to us. So again, we've got, got halfway house on a lot of our rules. Again, we don't expect you to wear a uniform, and, uh, and our, you've probably seen many of our sick forms only wear this one item, this black badge, that's all you're going to have to wear is your uniform. Uh, but again, of course, you ha uh, we haven't had any instances really in the last few years. You have to bear in mind the appropriateness of what you're wearing. So, for example, a, a T-shirt with an offensive slogan or swear word would not be appropriate on a school site. Um, again, I think our students have common sense not to do that. But, um, but again, it's a halfway house where maybe if you were a university or a different place, you have maybe more freedom about what you wear. So, um, so that's that's the way it works. Um, so um, there are all the things available to you. We've had over 600 um, hits so far on our YouTube site on the various videos, which is fantastic. So people are obviously watching them. Some of the subjects have also prepared bespoke little introductions to their courses. So again, have a look on there and there might be some more coming on there soon. Um, and also, if you're um, uh, not familiar about the Sick Form Centre, there's also a little a quick brief tour of the Sick Form facilities on there for you as well. 
So that's probably enough uh, talk from me about um, introduction to sick form. So what I really want is you to answer some, some questions. So if I give you a minute or so to try and type into the meeting chat box any questions you have, they can be big things about how things are going to work. It might be things specific about your year group with the COVID-19 restrictions, or it could just be quite a small thing that's just been niggling you and you fancy sort of answering about, you know, something uh, like um, what you have to do in your in your three periods, for example. So. Um, if you if you're if you're ready, you can start to comp type into the uh, meeting chat box. I'll give you about a minute or so. Uh, and once we get some questions in there, I will happily answer them for you. Any questions yet going in the box? I've, uh, if you again, if you're not sure how you get the meeting chat box up, if you go on the uh, toolbar, if you sort of move your mouse, uh, there we are. We've got some starting to pop up. There's a little speech bubble. Uh, looks a bit like the one over my shoulder. Uh, if you click on that, um, then uh, your a little sidebar called meeting chat will appear, and you can start to type into there. Okay, so I'll start working away through the questions, but feel free to keep adding questions onto there. So we've got a question firstly from Sol. Um, uh, due to COVID, will we have to use the finger scanners to sign it out? That's a good question. Um, so what we're currently doing at the moment is we're, we've gone back to our suppliers and we're trying to look at another way of registering electronically. It may well involve the uh, badges. Um, so we're looking at that at the moment and trying to find a way which will reduce transference. Um, ultimately, if we couldn't use that facility, um, then we would have to go back to using at least temporary in the autumn term AM form times, but we're trying to avoid that. So we're trying to find a more hygienic way of doing that. So currently our IT team are de dealing with our suppliers to see if we can make a small change there. Um, so yes, that's a really good question. And again, as soon as we know, um, we will uh, again uh, send that information to you. So um, that's something that is in the mix at the moment. So sorry, I can't give a perfect answer, but that's um, it's certainly something we're considering. Um, will class sizes be reduced uh, from Natasha? So um, currently, um, Tave Room is a very strange place. Uh, we've got uh, year 10s uh, in at the moment and some of our year, current year 12s. And we're restricted to only quarter year groups and we have no more than eight or nine people in a classroom and the classrooms are all look very very bleak at the moment they've all been completely cleared of all uh, bits and bobs and there's just uh, plastic chairs spaced out at two meter intervals the government has confirmed today that um, all social distancing in schools will end in september and full class sizes is once again permitted in all schools and colleges um, so the only way to open a school, um, full size school, you know, whether it's a primary school, a secondary school or a college will be to have four class sizes. Um, we've had to split normal class sizes into four classes. And obviously, if you do that, for, that's fine when the school is only open for one or two year groups. But if you do that for the whole school, it's not possible. I mean, one good thing, of course, about sick form is many of our sick form classes, and we're very lucky at Tavern to have this, are much smaller than um, the normal. So our average class size is around 10. Um, so it's not really a massive deviation from the current situation. We have got a few more popular subjects. Um, we have, a, I think, our biggest class this year um, has nearly 20 in it for sociology. Um, we are looking to try and split those bigger classes if those people turn up um, and uh, we've got I think, a math class of 16 um, but again they are much close smaller than the year 11 and below classes of of 30 31 um, and again you can obviously space out in the rooms uh, accordingly so um, so yes so class sizes will not be reduced uh, as in with a fixed level of there can only be eight in a class but uh, we will try and uh, make it as smaller groups as possible. The government plan from September, which the government has announced today, is um, to use what we call year group bubbles. So it um, <laughs> sounds a very strange phrase, basically to try and keep students uh, in, in groups um, in primary schools of classes and in secondary schools, uh, particularly at years 10 to 13 in year bubbles. Now we're lucky because we're a relatively small sick form that, um, that they put a limit of 240 students. We do not have more than 240 students students or, or likely to in September in year 12 and 13. So the sixth form centre itself will be essentially a year 12 and 13 bubble. Um, we'll, we will be looking at over the next couple of weeks, trying to make sure that the classrooms and specialist rooms for sixth formers are as close to that area as possible. So we are minimalising the amount of space you're moving around this school. So it might be why uh, there are still the dangers of COVID that we might uh, re-room some of the rooms. You say if you have English, you might not have it in the English block, for example. Uh, the English teacher will come to you uh, in a, a different area. So that's what we're looking at at the moment. Again, um, but the uh, the idea will be that we'll be secure as a sort of giant class uh, of uh, roughly 200 uh, sick formers. 
Um, okay, next question is from Louis. Um, with larger class sizes, will we need to wear masks? Well, again, the current guidance that came out with the, today from the Department of Education is that they don't want people to be wearing uh, PPE uh, in schools, either teachers or students. Um, again, we will keep adapting whatever advice um, is in place by September. Uh, at the moment, though, we have a situation in schools where uh, our year 10s and 12s that are coming in, they ha have to change um, their face mask and things if they want to wear them when they come in and put a new one on, which we provide for them. But uh, it looks like that's going to disappear. Um, again, because children are relatively low risk, um, that's, I think, made part of their decision. But again, we have to follow the guidance that is given to us uh, by the government and what we have to abide by. So, um, so again, that will be something we'll look at. Um, again, we have quite a lot of PPE um, in the school at the moment and if we're allowed to then I'm sure we'll we'll, we'll, we'll be, see if we can um, of course provide that but again it all depends on what we're what they finally legislate for us to do and that will be the same at, at our school to other sick forms like Helston or Reefham uh, or the also or places in the city um, and colleges as well so again we'll all be doing the same sort of thing um, okay, Poppy says, when we find out what form we're in uh, is it random or we put uh, with at least one friend and we do try and keep people with friends as much as possible um, and uh, what we, we usually do is try and find out um, put people who've been friends together uh, again what we can do is um, send you um, a, uh, a form to fill in where you can maybe uh, write down we normally do it tomorrow actually and ask you to fill in a slip so we can do it electronically instead where you just need to nominate one or two people you'd like to be with um, and uh, then um, we'll try and put you together. The forms are mixed forms at the moment, year 12 and 13 together. Uh, so roughly 10, roughly 10 students from each year group. And um, and again, otherwise, what we try and do is put you with a, a teacher that is near your specialism. So, for example, uh, one of our great tutors is Miss Kingsley, who is a science teacher. And so if you do mostly sciences, which a lot of sick formers do, we try and put them in her form because, of course, she can give really good advice about the science subjects. If you do maybe a humanities subjects like history and geography, then you might have someone like Mrs Richardson, who is uh, obviously the head of history. So so again, we try, try a little bit to sort of tweak, um, tweak people to people that feel most appropriate. And we can move people around. Um, what we usually say is um, in September is again that first two week trial. If you wish to move forms, um, then there is the opportunity to do that, but we have a sort of form swap. We can't have one form of you know 25 people and one form of five. Um, so we need to make sure that we keep the numbers. So we usually get people to nominate and swap between each other. Uh, it's not really a big problem. I should point out that form time is a bit different at sick form. So you don't have form every day. Um, uh, you know, again, if we normally don't have form in the mornings at all uh, because people will electronically sign in. And in the afternoons, we only have it certain days of the week. Um, so uh, and some of those sessions are one-to-one um, -one mentoring. So which will mean that you'll be called, you know, so say so next week can you know, one or two students please stay back for their one to one mentoring appointment. And you should have one of those roughly each half term. Um, so you won't be having, you know, 25 minutes every day. Um, uh, some some days we have just year 12s doing uh, skills for sick form and obviously for things like university applications and things ra rather than that you sit through that because you're going to do that later um, the year 13s have a bespoke form for that so um, so again form time might seem like a really big thing to from main school but actually it's a bit different than sick form so um, but yes there will be opportunity to swap we don't want anyone to feel unhappy uh, with who they're with but where are we um, next question was um, how will the whole retake GCSEs work? That is a very good question. Uh, again, we're still just finding out a little bit. We have had some confirmation this week. So Ofqual, the exam regulator, confirmed this week that students can reset any uh, subject, um, which is uh, a GCSE or A-level, um, in the autumn. It seems the A-levels are going to go first in October and likely the GCSEs in November. Um, again, we're still waiting to find out exactly how that's going to work because of course firstly we need to organize how many people are doing that and we won't really know that until after results day um because it could be you know if it was only three or four people doing it then uh, then then obviously you don't need sports halls and things like that available um so that's going to be uh, be interesting to find out 
Um, again, we're also trying to find out how that works with uh, progression into sick forms or into colleges. Um, again, it will be a national policy. So whether that um, you can start your sick form programme on the provision that you take your resits or whether uh, essentially you have to delay your start of sick form. We don't know that question yet. We, we have asked and we're waiting to hear back. Again, there is another off call update due in the next week. So hopefully we'll get some confirmation uh, on that. At the moment, the way we're working as a school is we're planning that uh, students will come back. We imagine that most students will be um, hopefully happy with their results and if they've got one or two subjects they are less happy with then they might volunteer to that it's, it's um, anticipated very few students will be planning to retake you know nine or ten GCSEs in all subjects um, and so that I can't see any reason why that can't run alongside but again it all depends it's more difficult with students who for example may be retaking because they want to get a particular grades so let's say for example you've got a level five in geography and you felt you could give you better than that um, then, of course, taking a reset alongside A-levels is no problem. The, the difficulty comes to students who are on the borderline of the entry requirements. So if you haven't got the six passes to get into sick form uh, and you want to retake, um, that's the area we're trying to get confirmation on. Um, obviously, we want to try and give as many people uh, a chance as possible. Um, and again, that's something that all sick forms are currently liaising with. And I have a meeting uh, every week uh, with all the heads of sick form and colleges across the county. And again, we are all, all asking the same question. So it's a very good one. Um, but we are we'll try and get that firmed up as soon as possible. And again, a letter will come out as soon as we get 100% clarity. We don't want to set send letters out speculating on things which then get uh, rescinded or changed uh, by the government. So I do appreciate that, that is a, a difficult area and one that many of you will feel very nervous about, but uh, and rightly so. But um, hopefully we'll know very soon. Um, next question was from James. Uh, when will the computer logins and ID cards be given to us? Again, what we normally do uh, on our induction day to day is um, uh, ask you to see for your permission to take your photograph to produce your lovely ID card. It's got to be nice in the mind. Um, and um, we would uh, and we would then start producing those over the summer. Um, obviously, we, that's not going to be possible uh, this, in this instance. And we did contemplate you sending pictures in, but they do have to be a certain format. And that could be quite complicated for people and may mean they have to be redone. So what we're going to do is when you come in on that first day on the 7th of September, we are going to take your photographs uh, on that day. And that's why it's really important, uh, certainly for your first choice, but even if we are reserved choice to try and return that appendix a set of forms that we've sent you they include things like permission to have your photograph permission to have your share have your details um, your computer agreement and things like that the sooner you can return those the sooner we can produce things uh, straight away in september otherwise that can delay things um, every year, uh, even in other circumstances, we have form times just that first week anyway, so it won't affect, you won't need your name badges until really the second week, and we can usually get them turned around at that time. It will be a priority for us, so that shouldn't be a problem. So you usually get them last year, I think they got them about the Wednesday or Thursday of the first week um, with, uh, with that. Computer logins, you'll get instantaneously on the first day, day if you've already signed the computer agreement. Um, it's uh, more, if the students haven't got a computer agreement, we have got some temporary logins, uh, visitor logins, logins that you can use on those first few days but we do need that those permission slips back and there's going to be a box in reception of school um, from today uh, if you would like to return those forms school is open until the 21st of July so you've got just about under three weeks um, and again you don't need to come in uh, worry about touching anything there's automatic doors into reception and if you just go in drop your forms in the box every few days that will be um, take well every day that will be cleared and then updated onto our system if you then charge choose not to come to our sick form under data protection we will destroy all that information um, so don't so even if we are your reserve choice it's probably best to return those forms to, to all your choices so that they'll have equivalents and that makes it makes it quicker and smoother so that's a really good question from James um, who've got next Lucy says uh, when and how will we choose our enrichment options so that's a brilliant one and um, are we able to change our choice so yes so enrichment so again uh, if you go on the um, website link um, there is uh, three documents in the sidebar on there about enrichment there is an enrichment video as well on the YouTube uh, site which Miss Reading our enrichment coordinator um, will be uh, give it, talking you through as you would normally on the day today. Um, enrichment is really important. It's really good for student well-being. It's all those extra things. 
So as well as your regular levels or your BTEC or your access program, um, many employers, many uh, apprenticeship uh, providers and universities really, really value students that do just not just the bare minimum. They don't just do their studies. Um, and anyone in level three study at college or sixth form will be doing the equivalent of three A levels. So, um, so they're always looking for people to do extra. And I know many of you do extra things probably already, you know, from swimming instructing to uh, gymnastics to various other uh, crafts and sports and things in your own time but we also think it's important that we provide some of that at sick form as well and we have a variety of things to do and they, they can be things like we have sport of course but they also things that may be a bit more kind of practical things like um, grub on a grant which miss dallas teaches um, which is a session of kind of how to cook independently which is maybe something you you might be doing by yourself in the next few years um, and again um, we have life skills and a whole variety of different uh, activities what we're asking you to do is there's an online form um, uh, where you can uh, fill in electronically your preferences it, we know it's yours because it's attached to your email account so if um, you know if, if I filled it in it, it would say Mr Linnell's account so we know it belongs to you and um, and again it's asking you to basically rank in order the ones you want to do um, again what we then do is try and give as many people the first preference as possible one or two of the courses are particularly po uh, popular so what we'll do in that case is we, we always swap halfway through the year so at February half term in 2021 um, you people move on to their second choices and if you don't get your first choice at the first half of the year you'll certainly get it the second half so we make sure everyone gets a chance to do that what the enrichment they want and they're also on top of that enrichment's not just these one hour a week sessions but there is also lots of other opportunities classroom support uh, volunteering again um, obviously with covid we might have to change some of those options we have quite a lot for example of students helping in the oap home which may not be um, as uh, desirable at the moment with transference but um, but we have a whole range of things uh, including work experience and trips um, that we run and so um, again the government guidance today confirmed that uh, day trips without overnight stays in the uk can resume September so um, hopefully there'll be things you can take part in as well uh, again all of these guidance will be reviewed and if the government uh, do ask us to stop any of these things we of course will uh, um, go in line with that okay so that was a really good question so yes I urge you to please go onto that online form the link again is on the website and just pop in pop in what you would like to do and if you want a bit more of a talk of each of those options then uh, refer to the video Okay, um, where was I? Um, Sol again. Um, so if we have given the slips in when we're in Tavram High, do we need to give out new forms? So I think that means is that if you've already signed a computer agreement, yes, you do. Um, the reason is, is we've slightly amended it. Again, I told you in sick form, there are some additional changes. Uh, for example, you have access to Wi-Fi, you have access to using your mobiles at school in the sick form areas. So again, there are some slight differences so again, we also lend out laptops for bursary students. And so there is, uh, it is a bit different. Um, so we do need you to sign a new set of forms. Um, again, we often find that people have uh, data they submitted when they were back in year seven may have changed, you know, some phone numbers and things like that. So all those forms do need filling in. Um, if you are eligible, particularly for the sixth form bursary, um, which uh, is designed to help students access education, again, there's a form in there for you to fill in. Uh, next Wednesday, the, the new details for exactly who qualifies for that uh, come out. Um, and again, that'll be sent to you. Um, and uh, and again, it's, it's just really important you can sign as many of those things as possible and drop them back to us. And um, we've tried to put them all in one document to make it a bit easier. You don't have to, some of them are optional, so do read through them carefully. Uh, I, I urge you to do them with your parents as well um, and again so, so go through them because some of they might be able to answer some of the questions you don't know particularly ones relating to things like family income or whether you want us to use your image in publicity for example um, but there are of course essential ones we need like you know having your photo for photo ID um, and things like that so um, uh, again if you want to use the food system the biometrics uh, we'll, we'll need as well um, and again I should, re should reassure you that all data, of course, is, is um, complies with um, GDPR, which means basically only use the ask for information that we need. And of course, we destroy all the information when you've left. Um, so again, um, it's very confidential. So it's um, so that's really important that if you read that those permissions carefully, they'll be on those forms. OK, next question. Lots of good questions. Um, where can we find the slips? Um, so they, uh, if you've got the letter on the, which is attached to your email, 
there is, uh, if you go down, like sort of embedded in there, some links, there's a welcome booklet uh, that contains all the information. And then the forms are in what's called Appendix A uh, on there as well. So if you click on those hyperlinks, they should take you straight to the forms. Again, uh, if you would like to request a hard copy of the form, so you have to, have, can't print them out at home to sign, that's not a problem. Again, if you email uh, either myself or Miss Higson, again, her, 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 she's the sick form administrator and her details are in that letter as well, then we can uh, print them out, uh, put your name on, name on an envelope and leave them in school reception for you to collect and then bring them back to return. So that's not a problem. So again, that's where the SIPs are. So if you can't get, can't download them and print them yourselves, which I totally understand, uh, then please just contact us and we will print you out hard copies. Um, but we don't want to do that for everyone because, of course, that could cause unnecessary journeys for some people who live further away. So, um, like I say, the school is open from the 21st up to the 21st and then the school reopens for A-level results day on the 13th of August and there'll be staff in from then. Of course, the, the obvious day is the 20th when you'll be in for your results. And again, we can take forms at any of those points. Um, so, yeah, so that's a good question. Right. Have we got any more questions? They've all been really good so far and covered a whole uh, range of issues. No. I'll just give it one more one more minute to see if there's any more last questions. Uh, if not, oh well, here we are, Natasha. Um, when do you get information about buying books? Well, it depends on your subjects. Um, a lot of the subjects at Taven provide you with resources. Um, and again, if you um, go on the YouTube channel of the, the subjects that have provided videos, many of them have mentioned the books they use there. Um, so, for example, in my subjects, politics and history, um, you know, I've put pictures of the cover and the names of the books on there. Again, you might well want your own books. Um, so even though we would offer you in most subjects a copy, uh, some people prefer to buy them. Uh, some sub and some subjects insist that you buy them. So it just depends subject to subject, really. Um, I mean, that's partly because at A level, you've got the, the books are usually you know, 20, 25 pounds a piece, but they would last you both years. Um, and it allows you to put post-it notes in, to write on them. A lot of students like highlighting. Um, and obviously you can't do that if you're borrowing a book. Um, also details of revision guides and things like that, which again, people often think about buying at the end of a course. But, um, but actually can be really useful to have as you go and to make annotations and to stick notes in and things like that. So, um, so yeah, so again, um, what, we, what we can do is also um, over the coming few weeks, maybe also pop on our website um, a sort of direct link of uh, books. We have a, a, a document for our bursary students, which has all of the textbooks in, so that shouldn't be a problem to upload for you. And um, uh, yeah, and again, uh, again, these are easily bought by over uh, online providers like Amazon, obviously there's others available, um, or could order through bookshops. Um, another thing you could you can be able to do from this weekend when many of the libraries open is if you want to sort of sample books before you buy them, uh, the forum and big libraries um, have those books. Um, and if you if you want to order them to your local library, like uh, at Taverham, for example, they can order them from anywhere in the county uh, for you. So, um, so again, that might be something to look at. Um, but yes, we'll get some more detailed information on there. But again, in the meantime, have a little look um, on the YouTube videos um, and in the and in, in the information sheets. Again, many teachers put it in their information packs for the summer homework and additional homework. My right, next question was from the, um, when will we know which teachers we get for each subject? Oh, um, well, some of, some of you will already probably know because uh, they may well have told you. Um, again, on that first day on the 7th of September, you'll get to meet the teachers. We are fully staffed for September. We've made a few new appointments. Um, most of our A-level staff are the same as in previous years. Um, so, for example, in something like uh, you know, economics, Miss Robertson, the economics and the business teacher, for example, uh, teachers that you may not have come across in the school, uh, like Miss Redding, who is a, a psychology teacher and is a subject that's obviously not available uh, before year 12. Um, so, so they that so you have many of those familiar. There are a few new teachers coming in, uh, some of them highly experienced. We've got um, uh, a new uh, head of Key Stage uh, Five English, for example, um, who's brilliant uh, coming into the school. So you will you'll meet and greet them uh, then. But most teachers will be familiar to you uh, from the departments, and will usually be the experienced teachers in those departments um, to teach A-level. So, um, so again, um, again, some of those videos that are online will explain um, in that particular subject um, who's teaching the course. 
um, and the breakdown of the course. But uh, but all of you will get that um, uh, in September. Um, and again, um, of course, you have to remember at A level, you're probably going to have most people doing three subjects. You're probably going to have usually two teachers per subject. Um, and um, and so probably about six, six, seven teachers possibly um, as, a, as a subject. Um, so again, you don't see as many people, um, but uh, one of the really lovely things, and we get so much feedback about Tavram, is how nice the teachers are um, and, um, and how well they know their students, which again, at A level is very different. So even if you have a teacher you had before, so let's say, for example, you have Mr. Large as your uh, science teacher, and now you've got him very level chemistry, you'll find that the way the teacher talks to the student and the, um, the relationship is very different at sick form because you are young adults and that's how we brief our staff is to treat you as young adults that doesn't mean that you can do exactly what you want but it just means that they will uh, automatically assume that you really really want to be in that subject and you're interested um, and they will talk to you um, like I'm talking to you now in a kind of uh, mutual respectful way um, they'll still chase you for things if, if work isn't isn't due but again there's a very different sort of dynamic and that's because the classes are very different um, in a, any subject really at GCSE, um, you know, however good the teacher is, there will be one or two people in every class who don't really want to be there. Um, you know, there are a lot of compulsory subjects or limits on option subjects. At A level, but you know, almost by definition, the students are there because they really love, you know, English literature or geography or you know, health and social care, and therefore that's why they've chosen it. So the dynamic is really, really different. Smaller numbers, uh, a much more mature way of working. And that's why I've said to quite a few of you before, it's year 12 is not the same, like go from year 10 to year 11. It's almost like a school within a school, really. Um, and I know that some of you, when you've looked at other places or, or for your second choice, have said that's because you want something different. Uh, but the feedback I get from a lot of my students is that they feel it is very different. It's not almost like you've got the same environment of the school um, and you might recognise people and it feels quite homely. But at the same time, it's a very different sort of setup um, uh, and experience day to day. So, um, so hopefully that will be really uh, beneficial. Um, where were we? Um, so, um, James says, when did we get our timetable? So you get your timetable on that first day on the 7th of September. Um, again, if you look at my video, I'll give you a sort of sample timetable. They look a bit different to what you get in key stage uh, three and four. So um, the main difference being that you don't have a lesson every hour. So for an A-level, you have nine hours per fortnight. So basically four or five a week. Um, so you're looking really um, at having sort of roughly sort of something between 16 and sort of 17 hours of teaching a week, um, including your enrichment. Um, and so that means that you have probably sort of uh, the equivalent of a, a day and a half to two days of your week where you're not timetabled. Now that won't be in one big block, it will be all spread out. So it might be, for example, that on Monday morning you have a double lesson, nothing period three, and then one something period four, and then something period six. And we do have period sixes at sick form as well, not every day, uh, and you might not have one, but we have some uh, um, on Tuesdays to Thursdays. Um, so that would mean you stay till four o'clock. Um, and um, and again, um, what the idea of these free periods, as students call them, or study periods, really, we should call them, is that it's a great opportunity for you to be studying for that subject. Um, and one of the hardest things about moving to any sixth form or college is you, you get what you ask for, which is you have a lot more independence and a lot more freedom. But uh, that does may come with the sort of downside that you have to organise your time more and students that are organised do really, really well in that transition uh, and students that find organisation difficult sometimes need a bit of help and advice that we can provide for you. Uh, but essentially um, what you should be doing in those study periods, not every single one, but you should be trying to use the bulk of those to do your studies. Um, that's not just homework, and I think that's a natural thing for students to assume is, you know, what, how about, what should I do in my study period? Oh, I'll do my homework for my, for my maths. What if maths haven't set homework that day? Well, it's not just homework, it's um, what we call preparation, uh, reflection um, time, so wider reading, going over what you've done. Many of our students type up or re-go re through their notes. Um, and uh, make changes. Some students that don't understand well, don't understand things the first time, which is perfectly normal, may go over and may add additional notes in. There's lots of extra reading in our sick form library and, uh, and certainly online. And so there's lots more kind of getting prepared for your lessons. Many of your teachers will ask you to get things ready, like like pre-homework really, um, what they call flip learning. So they'll be asking you to get bring something along to the next lesson. And again, that's that time for that. 
if you use that time really effectively and you're essentially like in year 11 coming in every morning and staying for the majority of the day going home uh, at three or four o'clock in the afternoon then you get most of your studies done then um, and that still allows you uh, to um, have social time you know it's all about work-life balance like any job or any um, other kind of study we don't expect you to be working till midnight every night that is obviously not healthy so um, so you, you should be having a social life um, you should be many of you uh, will hopefully get part time jobs. I know obviously the job market is up in the air at the moment, but hopefully things will settle down shortly. If you already have a part time job, as long as it's not between the hours uh, of 8.30 and 4 o'clock Monday to Friday, that's fine. Again, it's got, got that balance though, making sure you're not working too many hours. You know, we always have one or two students who, you know, get to take on too much work uh, because the, of the money and uh, and then they find that they can't keep up with their studies. So it's getting that balance. Um, and so it's possible to do all those things, you know, go to the gym, keep fit, have your clubs and stuff alongside going to sick form. Um, so it's just how you manage that time. The students who struggle at sick form and find it difficult, which there will always be some and, and which we give extra support to are the students who, like I say, don't use that time. And if you come into school and only go to your two, three lessons and then waste two or three hours, then of course you've got to make those two or three hours up at another time and so um, the way A levels work and their equivalents is that you should be doing roughly one hour of preparation or reflection or um, homework for every hour you're in class and actually over a fortnight that means that you're working roughly a 30, 32 hour week which is far less than many of your parents are working in the average working week in the UK. So it's perfectly possible to do Monday to Friday um, if you manage your time effectively. And of course, you know, we have students, for example, who might be a swimming instructor. And so they, they do swimming instructing in the evening, in which case they do their work at the weekend. We have other students who work in a shop at the weekend. And so they do some of their work in the evening. So it's all about each individual finding their sort of niche, really. OK, so where were we up to? Um, um, what are you expected to bring to school on the first day? So you will get your timetable, we've answered that. You will have lessons on that day. So like I've said, there's going to be uh, five blocks, uh, periods two to six that first day, and uh, that will allow you to go to your three or four subjects in those blocks. There's something else in the in the one that you don't where you have a free uh, on that day. And that will give you a I mean the first day you get to meet all those teachers, answer all those questions, find out all about those subjects, make any changes that you want. It's a kind of delayed induction, really. Um, and um, that will really answer a lot of your questions. I mean, all you need to bring to school on that first day uh, is if you haven't already bring those forms in hopefully we'll have them by then um, and, and some uh, yeah, a couple of pens to write with a bit a bit of line paper that is already all you need um, for that first day again each subject is slightly different but in general most students will ask you as the next question says to bring folders so most classes do not um, like using exercise books um, the main reason for that is because you'll get a lot of handouts at sick form you get lots of articles to read things like that and trying to mesh them together with your written notes can become really really difficult and so it's much easier having a lever arch folder where, um, a because it keeps each subject separate and each part of each subject separate so it's really organized it organizes it for you um, and secondly you can just slip in your essays your assignments handouts articles so it all makes sense uh, rather than having things in two or three different places so yeah again if you're a bursary student uh, then we will provide you a, a set of folders a set of paper a set of pens if you're not then, uh, then, then, then that's again something to maybe uh, try and get sorted rid of in September, um, and that would be the same at other colleges and sick forms as well. So um, again, of course, some students will, you know, anything specialist, you know, if you're using graph paper for example in a science lesson, they're going to give that to you. You know, they're not expecting anything amazing. Um, I would say stationery wise, I mean, part of my love stationery, so that maybe I'll go over the top. But I, I always think highlighters are really good. Post-it notes can be really good. Um, obviously, a few different colored pens uh, are really helpful, a ruler, you know, but nothing really much more spectacular than that. Uh, again, if you're doing a science or math subject, they might obviously need a certain type of calculator, a scientific calculator. You might also need a few other things. But again, they will tell you all of that um, and, uh, and not expect you to get it instantaneously. So um, so again, that's all there for you. So that's a good question uh, there. Poppy says, um, what happens what about home study? And when do we get it? So yeah, so home study is um, uh, something that we actually offer that some of our local uh, the schools don't. Uh, so schools like Reefham and Halston uh, don't run it quite the same as we do. Um, so way we, we do it again, as treating you as adults, 
um, we want to give you a bit more freedom. So on a normal on a normal day, you're in school from 8, 8.30 in the morning till three or four in the evening, and um, you're allowed to leave the site at lunchtime. So if you want to stay and use the canteen facilities or eat upstairs in the sixth form, that's fine. Uh, but if you'd like to go to the shops or if you'd like to go home for lunch, that's no, that's fine as well. And you just sign in and out uh, when you come and go. That's not a problem. Um, what we also, in addition to that, do is offer students who are doing well. And by well, I don't mean getting A grades, but they're just, you know, they've transitioned well to sick form. Um, what's something called home study? And by well, what I mean is our, each half term, we ask your teachers, is that student up to date? Are they, you know, um, have they got basically good behaviour, which is never really an issue in the sick form, um, and um, you know, it, yeah, so their attitude basically, and um, uh, and you know, are you handing your homework assignments in? And if those things are positive, which they were usually for in a year group, usually for about ninety five percent of students, then we are then grant them home study. Um, and that means you can choose three blocks of time. So it might be, for example, you have no lessons on a Thursday afternoon or you have no lessons on a Tuesday morning um, where you can tell us that that's going to be your home study. And we then are not expecting you at that time. So let's say, for example, you want to have home study period one, two on a Tuesday. We're, if you didn't come in Tuesday morning, we don't expect you in. Um, normally, if you don't turn up to school, like in main school, we would contact your parents, say, I'm afraid, you know, uh, Poppy hasn't turned up to school today. Um, are you aware of this? We delay that till uh, after break time. So if you haven't come into your period three class, then we would then contact them. So, they, so you've got that home study. Again, students who live very far away, they're probably not going to want to use that because they can't get home. Uh, students who, of course, live locally in Taverham are more likely to use it. But it is up to you. Some of our students are entitled to it and don't use it at all. Some like it because it gives them a bit more freedom. But we have restricted it to a certain number because, uh, again, um, other sick forms I've worked in and things that sometimes students can more or less never be in and they don't use that time effectively. So we want to get that kind of balance, really. Um, again, if a student then's attendance goes down, if their attitude goes down, then it can be withdrawn and expected in again Monday to Friday, 8.30 till 3. Um, but again, so it's case by case, but an overwhelming majority of our students cope really well with it and get it from after the first half term. So everyone's in that first half term because none of you've been in sixth form before. It's a big change. We really want to, and also we need to see how you cope with that. And then I say over one majority of you will then get granted home study from after half term. And we will talk individually to those people that we are worried about. Um, but that tends to be a very small, you know, count them on one hand kind of uh, group of people. And many of them get it later. So it might be that they get it from after Christmas. Uh, and again, it can be that kind of attitude of changing your mindset. So, for example, we just like in main school, we expect we, we monitor your attendance for every lesson. Um, and, and again, your parents get informed if you're missing lessons um, and things like that. And we, we, that, it's really important that you're in school. And um, we um, again, we know from the electronic sign in uh, whether you've arrived or not and whether you've gone or not. And uh, so that's really important because you've got all those extra freedoms. But I'm sure your parents will be very keen to know you're here. And obviously, when we phone a parent and say, you know, so and so hasn't turned up today, they're quite worried, I mean, rightly so. So that's why we have to do that. Um, again, if you go to a big FE college like City College, they might be a little bit different in the way they organise it. Um, but um, in other sick forms, they'll be very similar. So, um, so that's home study. So, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, um, if we don't have a lesson in period one, do we have to come in? Well, that's kind of covered by the home study. So uh, first half team, yes, you do have to come in and use a study period. Uh, if you're granted home study, then of course, uh, that could be one of your allocated times. Uh, most students tend to choose a double period where they've got um, freeze either in the morning or the afternoon. Personally, I think um, the afternoon ones are better or the you know, period three and four ones um, to have have um, time away because obviously, I don't know, if you're anything like I was as a teenager, um, if you have a home study periods one and two, some of you may not be up uh, and use that time effectively. So so again, um, you've got to think again about your personal circumstances, what you're like and do you trust yourself to be up and working uh, at home? Some of you will cope with that briefly. Brilliantly, some of you might think, well, actually, maybe I'll go home early and carry on studying at home in the afternoon. Um, if we don't have a less, oh, it's this one. Um, so again, will we be allowed to bring laptops? Yes. Um, um, yes. So it, 
teachers will have no problem with you bringing laptops to their classrooms. Um, what, one lovely thing about Tave Room High School is we are replete with sockets, um, so, that, so that it's easy to plug in and use. As I mentioned earlier, we've got brand new Wi-Fi literally the last fortnight um, installed in the sick form to really boost the signal there. There's a password which will all be given, um, so it's not for the main school, it's for, for you guys. And, um, and actually, we were already last year uh, having more and more students bringing their laptops in uh, to use the Wi-Fi. And of course, we encourage that. Again, if you're a bursary student and you're entitled, we, we can provide you with a laptop with, as well, which you can use at home and bring in as well. Uh, we've got about four or five students in each year group have currently been given a laptop but again again that's on uh, we encourage students who are eligible to apply for those um and um yeah so by all means bring them in because i know you use them so much we're really lucky as well we've got a massive suite of computers now um uh, about 50 computers in the sick form center um and they're also uh, being upgraded at the moment they've always been upgraded to windows 10 and um at the it department uh, they're, they're, they're scheduled them to be uh, given new machines over the next year as well. So we are upgrading that at the moment as well. So yeah, but if you like your own laptop, again, certainly for hygiene as well, it means you're obviously you'd have to wipe it down and things every time, then of course, then you're more than welcome to bring it. Right, next question. Uh, Joe, uh, do you know uh, when the other subjects will be uploaded to the YouTube channel? So yeah, so yeah like I say, we've um, we've asked teachers uh, to try and produce a YouTube chat, uh, video. Um, it obviously depends on their circumstances when they can. So um, I'm uploading them as soon as I get them. Um, and um, it was something we decided to do uh, last couple of weeks uh, because uh, we just thought it was something you could see and talk talk to your students. So as soon as we get them, we'll upload them. So if you just check it every week or so, um, then you can see if anything else has been uh, up added there. The what's important on there, I would really check out the enrichment one to, to answer those questions we had earlier, and particularly the one um, that uh, where I explained about how the sick form works. Again, uh, in your own time, you may not want to watch it straight after this because you've probably had enough of my voice. But uh, but again, um, that would be something that I would I would definitely look at. But then all the others, yeah, just pick your subjects and have a look at. Um, so yeah, I'll be encouraging staff to get them to me as soon as possible. So that's a good question. Right, I think that's all the questions so far. God, it's been nearly nearly an hour and we've zipped through. So before we uh, wrap up, has anyone got any final questions? Ah, James. Well, we need a folder for each subject or each teacher. Um, it does depend. Um, I, you list each subject. It's terrible to mix subjects. Things get muddled really quickly, particularly for similar subjects. And be like, oh, is this my psychology or sociology work? Is this my physics or chemistry? It gets muddled. Um, I, you know, in my subjects, for example, of history and politics, um, we have different teachers teaching different units. So we we so encourage our students to have different folders, and um, just because. It's almost like a different subject. You've got different teachers to do a different thing on a different time, and it just helps you keep your stuff organised. You're not getting it muddled. Um, so yeah, I would, my preference is always to have for each different unit or each different teacher a different folder. It keeps it all together. And if you keep it in order, one of the things I tell my students, which is such a simple thing, but makes a massive difference, is just to write numbers on the pages as you do them. One, two, three, four, five, 110, 111, 112. Because if your folder ever breaks, then it's really easy to put back in order. It's really easy to see the order it goes in. It takes literally a second every lesson, and you know it's it's all self-organised. It's um, so that could be really really easy. A lot of students like putting dividers in as well and labelling the subunits. But again, that's all about how you organise. What teachers will do differently at sick form is they won't uh, they will do folder checks. So every so often, maybe uh, once in a half term, they'll take your folders in to have a look at them to make sure they're organised, to make sure that you're keeping up to date. Uh, but they're not going to be doing what they do uh, maybe in, in year 11, which is kind of get, taking out your exercise book in and looking at them and saying, you know, underline the title here and, you know, uh, and checking every single spelling and things like that. What they will be taking in more often is, instead is assignments and questions, whether they are worksheets or smaller questions or whether they're essay uh, questions. And so, um, so you get a lot more personalized feedback, uh, but your folder is yours. And I always say to my students, you know, you've got to find your style. I, I have students who have beautiful calligraphy writing um, and they like to write it in different colors and that's up to them. But I couldn't impose that on everyone. I've got terrible handwriting. Uh, so I, I used to type my, my notes up um, uh, and I, a lot of students like to do that as well. Um, I've got some students with laptops, going back to the other question, who type all their notes on computer in the class and then they print them off and then put them in their folder that way. Um, 
okay, whatever works for you. And we have, also, of course, got free printing and printers of our own in the sixth form centre. So, um, so yeah, so again, um, you've got to find out what's best for you. Um, so, yeah, when we're not dictatorial in that sense. We just got whatever's best for you. That's about you being an adult deciding how you manage your information. What we do check is that you are keeping information and that you are, it's organised, even if it's on your system, um, you know, you've got to come up with it. Um, but there are lots of different tips and examples that we'll show you and inform time actually in the first term. We did give you some examples of different ways of doing it so you can kind of come up with your own style. We're not expecting you to kind of invent your own one, but you may well do. Right, um, let's have a look. Um, it's every day six periods long. No, uh, Mondays and Fridays, there's never period sixes. Um, and it's not that often. So you may only have one or two a fortnight. If, if that, some people have none. It is literally to do with fitting the timetable in with those specialist teachers. Again, it's quite normal in sick forms. Uh, most colleges run later anyway. I used to work in an FE college and, and the, all lessons finished at four o'clock. Um, so um, so again, it, until you get time to you won't know, but it won't be, you know, it will be something like, oh, Tuesdays in week two, I have a period six for chemistry, for example. So, so it's a good question. Again, it depends on each student and there's so many permutations um, it's hard to predict um, they say the timetable at the school is, is just coming out at the moment um, it's all been uh, uploading on the computer system as we speak and so um, so we'll, we'll start to see but it's it's again it's it's not um, you won't have every day so we're not like some schools who open till four o'clock um, we will be offering um, our some of our lowest school and you may want to take part in it as well the opportunity to stay stay later because of course they've got extra learning to do uh, because they had time out of school um, and the sixth form centre is always open to students till five o'clock anyway so if you if you for example have got a late bus or I have students who take buses quite a long way but they don't want to get stuck up in rush hour so they like they like to hang around after school and do their study then or you just or you just feel that, that you can study better at school than at home uh, for whatever reason um, uh, or you want to wait for a sibling who's got a club or whatever it is we you can all the sick form is always there so you can always stay stay after five up to five o'clock any day it's not a problem monday to friday so um so yeah so you've got those facilities uh, if we use school transport will period six be taken into account yes um so again we do that we often offer some students have taxis provided uh, by the school if it's a big problem but um so again that's not a, not a problem and uh, again we can't move lessons but we can sort that out so that's not a problem Again, it's very rare we have problems with that. Um, can we connect our laptops to the school printers? Um, uh, I don't think you can connect your laptop to the school printer um, uh, remotely. I, I'm, I've not seen anyone be able to do that. I think what you can do is if you just have a USB stick um, or some data center, you can uh, just save files onto there, print them, and then and then put it back into the computer. So, um, but yeah, there are printers obviously all around the school, but there are some in the SIG form as well. Um, it's something I can ask and find out about, but I'm, I'm not sure how easy that is with Wi-Fi to kind of communicate with the printer network. Uh, but, um, but yeah, but certainly, um, I would just get a little dongle or a USB stick. Um, or, of course, you can save it to your Teams drive uh, and your SharePoint, and you don't even have to use a dongle. It just goes straight onto the computer network anyway. So that's not a problem. Um, or um, your other alternative might be to um, email it to yourself, um, which is something I sometimes do, is email myself something to print. And when I'm in school, I then print it. So again, there's lots of different ways. And again, you, you just find this style. But yeah, that's not a problem. Uh, where were we up to? Um, yeah, I think that's the same question, I think, from Lucy. So, yeah, so I think that's all of them. Right. Last chance then. So <laughs> any final questions uh, before I drink a large glass of water to clear my throat? No? OK. Oh. Is it hot? Uh, at school, uh, um, it can be, it can be, and this, if you're asking about the studies at the centre, or is it fun? Sorry, is this a typo? Sick form, is sick form fun? Yeah, but yeah, that's great, is it hot? It is, it can get warm in the summer like any school, but, um, but uh, if, is it fun? Yes, I mean, I, I, well, I think personally, I, I, I put my career in sick forms because I think sick forms are the best part of secondary education. You'll see the teachers come alive in their sick form lessons because 
uh, you know, essentially they have to simplify things for key stage four and key stage three, you know, and uh, and at A level, you can talk, you know, much more intellectually and um, and you've got students who really are love their subjects. So it is a really different interaction. Um, and that's just in the subjects. Again, we like we've got a nice community. Um, uh, we're currently at the moment interviewing our sixth form leadership team in the year above, which you can apply to the following year. Who make who run a lot of things in the sixth form. Um, we have a lot of events as well. Um, and of course, probably most prominently as our rag week every sort of February in the February time uh, where we do charity and fundraising, uh, which I know many of you would have contributed to in the lower school. So, yeah, hopefully it's fun. They obviously organise their own prom, which is not a big kind of ball um, like in year 11. Obviously, your, your ball hasn't happened this year. But again, each year you choose what they want. So in recent years, they've chosen more for sort, sort of pre party, I suppose, um, as they as they say. Um, so, yeah. So, again, hopefully it should be fun. You obviously you can mix with people that you in your lessons, you won't see as many people as before, but they'll be in the sick form. We have a common room so you can work collect collaboratively in there. There's the atrium and the canteen open to sick formers uh, during the day. And so there's places to socialise as well. So and it's a great time and lunchtime every day. If you stay on site, you've got uh, you know over an hour a day of socialising there. Uh, usually at this time of year, if it's hot and stuff, the sick formers congregate on parts of the school field to, to have their lunch and things. So so hopefully it is a, a fun activity, a fun time. You know, it's a great opportunity to, to study things you enjoy. Um, to be a bit more of, a, uh, of an adult, but also to, you know, it's an important part of your li life. And we know that students like to have uh, fun and a lot of them do things communally outside of school as well as in school. And again, the Richmond provides that some of that, those activities as well. So, yeah, hopefully you'll find it fun uh, as well. Um, do we keep our current 365 account? I believe you do, but it has, again, we need that um, uh, login back. So if you complete the um, uh, computer agreement, then your system won't be shut down. Um, and but yeah, yeah, there's a few changes to it, so you can access the SIGFORM network and stuff. Uh, but um, but yeah, so so again, we still need we still do need the computer user agreement back. Um, otherwise, what normally happens for Year 11s is between the sort of 20th of August and the beginning of term, those those systems all shut down. So um, so yeah, so you do that. Uh, yeah, we do have a traffic light system. Uh, if you're not sure what the traffic light system is, we have sort of three zones in the sick form, uh, all colour coded. Um, the sick form study centre, which is the old library, as many of you will know, know it as, uh, is the red zone. So that is the area that we try and keep quiet like a library. So it's not meant to be absolute silence, but, you know, you sort of whisper uh, if you're talking to someone, you know, you often hear the tip a tap of people tapping on the computers, but it's it's a quiet area where you can sit and study. You know, some students put their headphones in to help concentrate. We've got little booths um, where you can sit and sort of isolate yourself if, if you find working with other people. We've also got big round tables if you're with other people and you're sharing resources, but that's a quiet area. And it, you might think, oh, that sounds horrible, but most things I've been asked for since I've been at Tavrum is can we have a quiet study place where we can get on with our work that is never booked by other classes, that's never taken away, that is our place we can go and work and actually at Tavern two years ago they didn't have that um, and that was the big difficulty for students is uh, they didn't have somewhere to go just to work silently so that's that that big room where my if you visited my office at the back of it um, if you go and go through the double doors and you can see this on the tour video you go through to the common room which is our amber zone so an amber zone means you can work in there there are computers in there as well there's more round tables there's more comfy sort of um, so we have our office chairs in the sixth form study center uh, they have more sort of relaxed kind of uh, chairs you might see in a it's not quite a lounge but you know like an office kind of lounge um, or staff room and again that's a place where you can work and people sit with their books out and stuff but they're talking and they're de debating about things as well um, and then we have green zones like the atrium and things where where you can just talk and you know don't, and uh, you don't have to be working and um, at break times they all become uh, green zones. So at break time and lunch time, you can eat food, you can drink, uh, drink, um, uh, and you can socialise in all of the sick form centre. So, uh, but it's during the lesson times and form times, Monday to Friday. You you can then choose which area you want to go to. So if you're someone who who studies really well with background noise and talking to other people, then use the common room. If you're someone who no, I need quiet, I need to focus, you might prefer to be in the study centre. And again, each student, I tend to find students find what they like and they tend to stay in those areas. Um, or they sometimes alternate. You know, a student who goes, well, I've got this essay to do, will go and go into the quiet area. But it's really important we have those zones because. 
it's not fair on other students who are trying to concentrate if other people are talking and vice versa. So, uh, you know, I, um, I ho hopefully you'll find that really straightforward. Um, that's why we use the traffic light system, because, um, you know, I have said that my joy, I, job I enjoy least is, is nagging people to say, can you be quiet, please? You're in the st study centre and all I ask is sometimes people to leave because they are making too much noise. Again, it's not very many, but again, that's really important. So you've got those zones. It's really easy to just go next door if you want to talk and work in there. So it's. You know, it's um, it's a very easy, simple system for everyone to use. So yes, that's what the traffic light system is. So that's a good question. Uh, do we know if all the courses are definitely going ahead? Yes, so all the courses that you've enrolled on are going ahead. We, there were a few courses we couldn't run uh, due to numbers, and those students were already informed. Uh, probably already, uh, we didn't run combined English, um, uh, and we didn't uh, run um, some like foreign languages subjects uh, this year because we only had like one applicant. You know, so so those students have already have been were already met before the lockdown and uh, have made other choices. But yeah, yeah, all the other subjects are running. So we, um, and if you've got a con um, condition offer so when we sent you an offer say to do I don't know psychology maths and chemistry you're guaranteed a place on those courses if you want to change at Taverham it's usually not a problem uh, but obviously we have timetable blocks and we've got to make sure that they don't clash so um, we have five times where a week where different lessons are on and you're doing three subjects usually so um, so most combinations are possible uh, so if you drop a subject you've basically got uh, three other other times you could be studying so there's a little bit of restriction but what we do each year is we build that timetable around your options so we fitted it all in and we had i think three or four students who had unusual combinations that we contacted uh back in march um, um uh, march april time uh, to um, inform them that that combination wouldn't work but we always get to do that to make sure the maximum number of people get what they want uh, we can't have we'd love to in a perfect world run every subject but, you know we couldn't have you know french running with one student you know it's just not possible um, and the same is true at other sick forms and colleges um you know actually we're really lucky we for the size of our sick form we run a very large suite of subjects and that's why some of the subjects you know like classics for example are very small uh, music technology uh, things like that which many schools don't run um for that reason so um so we are really really lucky to to run these subjects even if they are kind of lost leaders in the sense of we think they're really important as subjects to keep going but no, they don't they, they they are expensive to run because you've only got you know, a teacher's been paid to teach just four people not to be teaching 20 people for example so so again i think one nice thing about tay from sick form in particular is our class size is quite small and in fact um i was interviewing a boy to be uh, one of our senior students the other day who's come from another of our local sick forms which is much bigger and he was saying his friends that stayed there uh, we're in all all their classes were over 20 25 and in Taverham his biggest class was 11 so he, he felt it was getting a much better deal so um and again the number of applicants we've got this year is really really healthy but we're looking around uh, just over 100 uh, applicants. We've got 105 um, uh, Tavum applicants, uh, 106, sorry, 106 applicants, and about 15 external applicants. Um, we envisage we'll get somewhere between 100 and uh, 110 sort of students, which is, again, we'll keep those numbers of classes at that size. OK, uh, who's got? Um, do we know if all the courses are yes, we've done that one. Um, do we have to attend form time? Yes. So, um, so all lessons, uh, enrichment and form time is compulsory. Um, and again, your your attendance is taken in each of those sessions. Um, again, form times. Um, if you want me to briefly run through the form times, uh, we do Monday is our sort of uh, about wide learning. Uh, we call it uh, news of six. Um, and uh, so that is all um, information about uh, the wider world and debating, uh, which is a really important skill at sick form. Uh, then Tuesdays is skills at sick form. So that's really in the first year, helping you guys in year 12 only about how you study, how you manage notes. So it's always like tips and things. Uh, Wednesdays is one to one. So again, once a half term, usually will you stay behind uh, on Wednesday to have your mentoring uh, with your form tutor, who's the one that writes your references for universities, apprenticeships and jobs. Thursdays, year 12, don't have um, have any form time. And Fridays, we have um, interform quiz competition, uh, which is very, very popular and becomes quite brutal, really, as both as forms compete to win. Um, and those quizzes are, are largely produced by all produced by students. Um, and so often forms nominate people. They're going to be their quiz masters. Um, and that's a really nice little yeah, fun activity that we do between the forms. And we have a big final each uh, each term uh, in the main hall um, uh, for that. So that's my form time 
specialised work. So we do we do think again, sick form is not just about your subjects; it's about a wider experience, and the, that's what you know um, employers and universities, what the so-called soft skills of communicating, working as teams, all that sort of stuff is done in that in that way. So that's why enrichment and and um, and form time is compulsory. Again, other sick forms are very similar. If you go to a college, they might do it slightly differently, but they might have a tutorial session as like one longer block a week. So they might have a tutorial, say, for an hour and a half on a Monday rather than broken up into different bits, different days. Obviously, because we're in a school, then therefore it's allocated the same time in the afternoon as when the main school do their form time. So um, hopefully that answers your question. Um, last question on here. Will we be able to, oh, so we get another one. we'll be able to um, online chat uh, well, this is the only online chat. And no, I'm happy to do another one. It was basically based, based on demand. So I was doing today because you haven't got the opportunity to come in today for enrichment, uh, so for every induction. But if you would like to me to hold another one, um, then uh, that's not a problem. I'm happy to do another one in a week's time. We thought some people might not be able to make today. So I'm happy to do another one. And again, I can email students um, when that will be. So yeah, happy to do that if that's what you would like. Um, who do we get contact? Um, if you want a hard um, copy of the forms, the Appendix A, contact Miss Higson. Again, her details are in the letter in the email that was sent to you and your parents. Um, her address there, f underscore Higson at TaverhamHigh.org. Again, there's a little hyperlink in the letter. Um, how, will we get regular homework? <coughs> you do. Uh, you probably get more homework um, than, well, you do get more homework than in GCSE, but of, of course, You've got a lot less subjects, so by definition, you're probably doing three times the amount of work in each subject because you've only got three or four subjects. Um, and the, but that homework will not always be quite the same. So um, a lot of sit form homeworks are essay based or assignment based, but there's also a lot of preparation things as well and research things. So uh, again, homework is a funny phrase because it carries such connotations from from high school, but um, but it, it's it's really you know think get things doing outside the classroom. You know, if you, there's no point you sat with a really brilliant specialist classics teacher in silence writing an essay for 45 minutes, it's, a, it's you're not getting much much of a learning experience. So they're likely to teach you something and then say, right for homework, can you now write answer this essay? This is how you do it. Spend about 45 minutes on it and bring it next time. Um, Often with deadlines, we give quite long deadlines, usually a week for most homeworks, um, unless it's a little bit of preparation. Um, it might be a little review quiz, in which case it might only take 10 minutes. Um, and uh, and again, you can organise them. They're all on Show My Homework, um, which you're probably using this year. Again, our current students who are still in, in this mainstream school are, you know, they're using it every day. I mean, um, and our year 12s currently, of course, are having everything set on Show My Homework. So everything else on that forum. And again, if you need extensions and things, if you're busy because, you know, whatever is going on in your own life or there's a particular clash of your subject work and things like that, then let the teacher know. It's about having a conversation. Teachers will not bite your head off and say, you know, you know, I want it in today, I want it in today. What, they're, what it's doing is about having a conversation. So if you say, for example, I'm really busy, I've got four assignments on, to, on could I hand this to you on Monday? Teachers overwhelmingly will say that's not a problem, but you need to tell them that. What they don't like is when it's due on the, on the Friday, you come in and go, oh, I didn't do it. Um, I've got too much on. So it's that different thing, you know, if, and again, if you're at university or in a work environment, it would be exactly the same. So, you know, uh, your employer will probably not, not be very happy if it's a deadline, you turn up on the deadline and say, I haven't done it, I'm busy. Uh, if you say, sorry, um, the deadline's coming up, I'm not going to get it done, is it possible to have an extension? They're probably quite flexible. So again, it's just that, that more mature way of talking to your teachers and um, and doing that. So again, that's a really good way of kind of, uh, of getting uh, your work in. But again, it's about you managing your time, you negotiating, the teachers are very friendly they just got to keep them in the loop uh you know and they, you know, if you say for example i've got a competition at the weekend or you know i'm visiting somebody i'm not going to get that assignment in for monday can i do it for wednesday i can't see they have any problem with that at all but they will have a problem if you turn up on monday and say i didn't do it because i was busy because of course you wouldn't do that in any other form of life so again it's that it's that the maturity that comes with being an independent student um not really much work as such about coffee shops to sick form. Yes, there's a, um, so yes, um, down in the cafeteria. The cafeteria is open all day to sick formers, not just at break time and lunchtime, uh, which is probably why they always get there first. Um, and um, if you want to get teas and coffees, hot chocolates, they're very popular. They're available all day in in the uh, in the cafeteria. So if you want, you know, if you like that cafe culture of studying, as in you know, want to go and have a, a hot chocolate and then sit and do your work on your laptop, then 
in study centre, that is not a problem at all. In fact, some of our students sit in the cafeteria uh, working down there. So you, it's about you finding what you want. But yes, that will carry on next year. Um, do we get a, a longer lunch break or is it the same as the rest of the school? It's the same as the rest of the school currently. Um, with these new COVID requirements, we're, we're looking at maybe staggered breaks. So not all your groups are going at once. So it might be that, um, that the sixth form break is, you know, at the same time as year 11, but the other year groups are different times. So we're looking at that at the moment, um, say the government guidance only came out today. Uh, but yeah, you'll still have the same length of time where, wherever it is. So um, many of you know, during mocks and during exam seasons, we shift lunchtime uh, and the lessons a little bit so it'll be something like that so um so yes from your point of view exactly the same and again the difference is if you do if you if you can reasonably get home or go somewhere else um for your lunch and that's what you want to do then you are able to sign in and sign out and go out at lunch you know um, unlike the lower school students who have to be on site for safeguarding reasons all day um so again when your parents sign the agreement again that's in the details so they know that we will be letting you to and go from if of course they for whatever reason they don't want you to leave and they let us know then we can we can try and uh, track that um okay where are we um are the prices the same for food yes so there's no like there's not a big discount for being a sick form of a new but they're all cheap uh prices anyway you know compared with what you'd get out in in uh going to the local shop or tesco's or whatever so um yeah so uh that's a good question right it's been an hour and 10 minutes um you must have had all the questions i thought by now last ones Will there be PE and if we have tens? There's not PE, P compulsory PE lessons like you have um, when you're in high school, but there is PE enrichment. So again, it's a choice thing. So if you want to take part in, in physical activity as your enrichment, I mean, obviously keeping physically active is really good. Um, obviously other of our students do swimming in their own time. They do go to the gym. They do various other things. They do competitive sports. Um, we, can, we can run sports clubs at lunchtime that we uh, each year we change it depending on what people want. So again, yeah, see, but there's not like a compulsory PE lesson that you have to go to. So uh, if you're not kind of that that, that um, mindset that you want to do that, then you don't have to do that. So, yeah. OK. And. Oh, am I staying safe? I think so. Um, uh, yeah, uh, you can see that we are in nice, clean, isolated, how clinical my room is, you see. So yes, I'm, I'm fine. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the question. OK, I think that's about it. If you have any personal questions that you didn't want to ask in the forum, then please feel free to email me. Uh, my address is on the letter uh, sent to you and I'll get those back to you as soon as possible. Um, it seems that some of you would like another one of these. Um, so I will uh, look at organising that. And there's a couple of things there, you know, you were saying about uh, textbooks and things, which I'll sort out uh, over the next couple of days and get those on the website as well. OK, some brilliant questions. It's a great shame I can't see you properly. Um, and the rest of my, I know my teaching team and uh, sixth form team uh, were, were really looking forward to today. So it's great to, um, shame they can't see you. Again, one of the videos we've popped on our induction thing is a sort of missing you from the staff of Tay from uh, high school and sixth form. So, um, so again, maybe you can always uh, watch that if you're missing your teachers a little bit as well. OK, thank you very much. Um, so if you're um, uh, hopefully I'll see you on the 7th of December, I'll be, of course, be there on the 20th of August on Results Day. And um, yeah, enjoy the rest of the, your summer break. Uh, any questions, please come back to us and uh, I will pop some updates on the website in the coming few days. OK, thank you very much then. Uh, bye bye.
It's got a few more to log off. Bye, Anna. Bye, Sol.